Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Up All Night and Are You Afraid of the Dark podcast. My name is Cortland, and with me is the best riddle solver, a cigar connoisseur, invitee of Sally's pool party, a bum every year, the slowest walker, Sardo's assistant, a sleepy daddy, a staple gun maniac, a gathered acolyte, the suds of Dublin, the laundry master, the cemetery wanderer, the snatcher of change, the one and only Brandon. How you doing, Brandon? I'm doing worse now. I don't think I can live up to that introduction. Is it the part where you're a staple gun maniac? Yeah. I don't know how to use a staple <laughs> gun. What do you just press the press the trigger? Nah. Well, I've only ever used it when I'm doing carpet, but you have to like push it into the ground and then staple. Oh God. It staple oh God. Staple. I can't do that. Oh, it sounds so difficult. Sorry, man. You're not quite the mo <laughs> I thought you were then. No. That's all right. How you doing this week? I'm doing pretty good. That's good. You know, I'm currently in the middle of editing the tale of the prom queen and you sound like horse shit in that episode so (laughs) i was fucking just you oh (laughs) it's really funny because you sound bad in jake the leprechaun and then in the tale of the dark music you sound all right and then we get to prom queen and you're just like (laughs) yeah i was trying to downplay how much i felt like dying but i think i pulled it off no one could tell yeah right right (laughs) It's okay, my editing magic will just make you sound like you're perfectly healthy. Just the unsickify button. Filter that shit right out. <laughs> right. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing fine. I'm kind of sleepy for some reason, but... Because you're up all night. Yeah, well, you know, I had to I had to make sure everything was good to go for today, because today is our season one wrap-up episode. Hmm. We didn't want to accidentally make a horrible show, you know? Yeah, not again. <laughs> yeah, never again. But then again, we say that every single week. So <laughs> one of these days we'll make a good one. Who knows when that will be? Maybe in season two. We never know. So you want to get started with this because I've been asking for some fan questions for I don't know, like a month or so, and we actually got some. Wow, that is surprising. I know we got we got ten questions from our fans, and uh, I don't think I told you what they were. So I'm gonna, no. just, you know read them and we're gonna answer them it's gonna be great look a little q a all right let's do it all right let's do it so i'm not a mermaid on instagram asks what's your favorite horror novel Ooh, favorite horror novel yeah she also asks what's your favorite genre to read so i guess we could just answer both of those in one yeah um let's see well i think that my favorite genre to read is probably fantasy because i grew up reading harry potter and uh moved over to Dragonlance, and then more well in high school it was um the game of thrones series which would be song of fire and ice um so i'd say fantasy is my favorite genre and as far as horror novels i really enjoyed reading the stand which is funny because brandon made me read that and the only reason we read it was because one of the pictures in your edition had like a, a group of people that looked like zombies. I remember that one picture at the very end and it yeah. kind of sort of looked like zombies. So I was like, you should read this. It's a zombie book. Yes. And that and that book was probably the longest book yeah, I ever read. at like 1400 long. pages. And uh, it was so worth it, though. Spoilers. Really spoilers for that book. There's not really any zombies in it. No zombies at all. No. There's like descriptions of dead bodies that sound like they could. And, and they mention it that they could pop up and be zombies, but there's no zombies. Yeah. Like most dead bodies, if they did get up and walk around, they would be zombies, but they're not. Exactly. But it was still a really good book. Super solid. Um, aside from that, I really loved Stephen King's It. That was a really good book. And that's the one I made Brandon read after I got done reading it. Yeah. That that was a that was a good book. I liked that a lot. It was very suspenseful. You know what? I liked The Shining too when I read that. I felt very timeless to me. I liked that part of it. Um, uh, but aside from Stephen King books, there's a a zombie series that I read called Day by Day Armageddon. That the first two books are like really good, um, but the third one is just utter horse shit. So just ignore it. But the, I'd say those those are my favorite horror novels. Now that I've taken all the good ones. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say The Shining. Now I've got to think <laughs> of another one. <sighs> yeah, I don't really read too many horror novels, though. Mostly just Stephen King. Like, I like the ones I've read, but they pretty much have all been Stephen King, I think. Oh, hey, what about Caliban Cove? <laughs> oh, fucking goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, when me and Brandon were in uh, like middle schoolish, there were these Resident Evil books that came out, and in our middle school, we were allowed to go to to the bookstore and pick out a book and add it to the like library of our pathetic school, and we bought these Resident Evil inspired retelling in book form of the video games, but the the author like went off on his own and wrote some non-video game oriented Resident Evil books. And one of them was called Caliban Cove. And it's one of the only books I've ever read where I got halfway through it and I just put it down and I couldn't read it anymore because it was just so dumb. That book is the second worst book I've ever read in my life. Did you finish it? No, fuck no. Okay. The worst book I have ever read in my life. What's the worst one? which is also a horror novel, is Parasite Eve. I've never read Parasite Eve, but I love the video game. <sighs> that is why I decided to read the book, but that book is fucking god-awful. Isn't it originally a Japanese it's book a Japanese that's translated? It's a Japanese book translated poorly. It's yeah. extremely boring. It is dry. Oh, it is describing cellular mitosis mitochondria for chapters on end do you remember in jurassic park when there'd be entire chapters where it'd be like malcolm yes. discussing chaos theory yeah. it's like that when i read that i was like the entire book yeah, i skipped those that is i loved all it, parasite jurassic park, but i skipped it <laughs> there's like one chapter in the end with a monster and the monster even <laughs> just talks about cellular mitosis and fucking... <laughs> yeah. So you're telling me it doesn't start in an opera house and, and a rat doesn't mutate and have like three tails and shit and attack a fucking police officer? No, I'm telling you nothing interesting happens in the entire book. I see. All right. So yeah, so... That, that's my favorite. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, you want to move on then? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I Am Not a Mermaid also asks, asks if we have any uh, IRL ghost stories. I don't really have any, though, that I can think of. Let me ask you a question. Sure. Do you believe in ghosts? Not really. I don't. Do you? Kind of. When I was a kid, and I, I used to get this weird feeling when I was in places that I think something bad happened in. I, I mean, that's just what i gathered um it's just this really uncomfortable unsettling feeling i used to get it all the time when my mom would take me into like fabric shops and stuff like a fabric shop in particular specific one and um i used to get it at my old house i haven't had that feeling in a while so i would usually like uh i'd get it in like empty houses too like if you're going to view a house just certain houses i get that weird feeling and it's just oof. I don't want to be there. But other than that, I don't really believe in ghosts that much. I haven't had any supernaturally ghosty things happen to me in my life. Well, I didn't experience this firsthand, so automatically that makes everything I'm about to say completely pointless. But Yeah, I wouldn't hold up in a court of law. Next. <laughs> I grew up in what was widely considered to be a haunted house. Uh, I was very young uh, when we lived there, and the house ended up burning down. So, oh yeah, it was probably, I remember you told me probably about ghosts. Um, yeah, but yeah, this this house, I would have like I've heard family members tell me about things that happened there, and it would be uh, loud knocks when nobody was there that sounded like someone knocking on something, not just a random you know house settling kind of noise. Footsteps, mm -hmm. things being moved, like seats being moved from under people, like not just you know. Oh damn. Not just something small, when nobody's in like the room. Full body apparitions, like the the works, like a haunted house from a movie. Wow, that's kind awesome. of shit. Yeah, but like I said, I was I was young when we lived there. But uh, yeah, Ugh, that's creepy. You know what? I did remember something too. When I first started dating my wife, who was you know my girlfriend at the time, I stayed over one night and we woke up in the morning to get to go to college or whatever we did, and um in the middle of her living room, there was like this candle, this glass candle holder thing. And we woke up and that thing was just up completely obliterated. Like it was just dust now. Hmm. And I never really understood how that could happen. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe ghosts are a little bit real. <laughs> I have been interested in the paranormal, like 
my whole life. I just had a fascination with it. But even I don't know like how to define how I feel about ghosts or anything like I think there's maybe something to it. But also there is maybe a scientific explanation like like let's say someone sees a ghost like what they're seeing is actually there, but it's not necessarily yeah. like, you know, the spirit of a dead person. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not it sure. Kinda, the way that I try to think about it is like it's kind of like magic, you know, it, it's not real. But also who's to say it's not real because like. We don't know everything about the world. You know, there could be ghosts here. And then I think about how, oh, wait, you know, how cruel is it that some people get to be ghosts and I'd assume that they get to be around for the rest of time. But what happens when the world, like, eventually the sun explodes and then the, well, like, what happens to them? Where do they go then? That's not fair. No, they haunt space. <laughs> I guess there could be space, space ghosts. <laughs> Uh, okay rebecca's got four questions she's got two for you and two for me do you want to do yours first always okay so rebecca rebecca asks brandon what's your opinion on vegemite Ooh. all right well as an american transplant to australia mm-hmm. i've had the pleasure of experiencing australia's most famous gourmet food and uh <laughs> I gotta say, it's the worst. It is absolutely (laughs) the worst thing that exists. Vegemite or all of Australian food in general? I mean, Vegemite by itself, yeah. Okay. Have you you had it? You know what? I remember, I don't know how many years ago it was, but when you were um, just talking to your now wife, well, you guys have been talking for a little while, she sent you like a care package of stuff from Australia, and Vegemite was in there. And I remember you having the jar and opening it up and smelling it. And I was like, nope, I can't do it. Yeah, it seems like something that only exists to be like a viral dare on the Internet. (laughs) It's been around forever and people love it. Kids who grow up in Australia, like grow up liking it. Like it's a cultural palate sort of thing. It's like Stockholm Syndrome or something. Yeah, but um, (laughs) yeah, it's it is foul so from my understanding this stuff is basically like seaweed or something like mushed into a fucking jar i don't know it tastes like salt and yeast Ugh, i hate yeast i made biscuits one time with yeast and it just i don't like the taste of yeast. go get a spoonful of yeast and put some brown (laughs) food coloring in it and boom you got vegemite so do they make like different flavors of vegemite like oh bacon cheddar vegemite they have a a cheesy vegemite that people seem to enjoy i don't know i ain't trying that shit i don't blame you so brandon have you ever played final fantasy 8 <laughs> i know that's kind of a weird question but is this also from rebecca yeah okay yeah a little bit hmm, that's good you know they're just they're gonna re-release it on the switch finally i was Oh, finally. Finally, they port Final Fantasy games to other consoles. It's cool to me because from what I knew of Final Fantasy VIII, it had some licensing issues. They they had to recreate the whole game from, like, the ground up, I guess, or something like that. So the idea of it being ported to other systems was really unlikely, and I'm glad that they figured it out. Because um, Final Fantasy VIII is not my favorite Final Fantasy, but... I'd play it again on the it Switch. It gets a bad rap. I can see why. There's some things about it that aren't the best, but also it's still a good game. Yeah, I'm going to say it, it's a good game. It was kind of like a, um, like Whiplash from Final Fantasy VII. Well, every other Final Fantasy, really, except for two, maybe. But it's just it, it went in a different direction. And uh, some people appreciated it. Some people hated it. Um, I think I'm more towards the appreciation side, though. So Rebecca has two more questions, and they're all for me, Brandon. <laughs> all right. I'll just uh, sit back while you answer your own questions. Okay. Rebecca asks me uh, if I have a pair of super specs, and I do not. I don't wear glasses. I have perfect vision. Wow. Oh, rub it in. But I do have this pain behind my right eye, and my wife tells me that I need to go get my eyes checked, and I'm like, why? Like, I mean, I maybe I will or whatever, but if I have to... What am I supposed to wear? Like a monocle? Like just one eye's bad? 
Uh, I would be so dapper, but also I, I can't do that. So maybe someday soon I'll have glasses and then I'll be just like everybody else. Yeah, everybody wears glasses. I know. It's you perfect so, vision weirdos that yeah. <laughs> really just stand out. So someday soon I may be just like Mary Beth and cursed with glasses. Yeah, she chose to put those glasses on over and over and over and over <laughs> again. <laughs> on and off and on and off and on and off. She could have quit anytime <laughs> she wanted. She was straight addicted to those super specs. Rebecca's final question is, Cortland, do you plan on having a cooking segment called Cooking with Cortland? Uh, she must have been a fan of that one time when I said that I cut almost all my fingernails off when I was <laughs> making dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I came out real bloody when those potatoes, with those, with those potatoes. Uh, did you get blood on the potatoes? I, if I did, I washed it off. I don't know. They they were gonna get boiled in water anyway, so it's not like it's not like I have any infectious disease that my family <laughs> would catch. <laughs> I do enjoy cooking, and uh, if people want, I can you know post pictures of my food to Instagram or something. I like to get fancy at least once a week, making fucking pan sauces and you know what's fancy? Other stuff. What monocles? Yeah, they are. You can have a monocle on cooking. Mm-hmm. Now you got posting it. all that, all that shit to Instagram. Yeah, if you guys are interested, I can. I like I said, I do like to cook, so I, I promise I won't cut all my fingernails off. I was, like I said when I when we recorded that episode, though, I was kind of drunk, so it happens. It was a whoops. So Kim also has three questions that we can both answer. Yay! Her first question is: Are you afraid of the dark? I'll let you go ahead. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I'm not like shaking in my little booties afraid of the dark, but I like having at least a little bit of light, whether it's from the moon or I don't know, like a hall. I don't like getting up in the middle of the night and having to go to the bathroom and being in complete darkness. That's Mm -hmm. stupid. Did you have a nightlight when you were a kid? Yeah, I did. I could not have any light. If there was even... (laughs) If there was, like, one photon of light floating through the air, like, I was fucking up all night. <laughs> oh, that's uh, that sucks, man. Yeah, I, I, I need darkness to sleep. You know what? That makes sense. Because I remember when I would stay the night at your house, you'd have, like, a blanket up over the window. So. <laughs> I would, yeah. No fucking sunlight getting into my house. So you need, like, utter darkness and like a fan running right just utter darkness and a coffin and just a cooler full of blood and i'm i'm good i'm good (laughs) i could take it or leave it um i mean i used to work third shift and i would frequently have to go to sleep while it was like 10 o'clock in the morning and the lights or the 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 sun was up and stuff so Hmm. um either way is fine with me i guess if i hear a noise in the house in the middle of the night and i get up and I'm like, all right, is this a murder I'm going to have to fight off in the middle of the night and it's dark and I can't see anything? Yeah, that's a little spooky. So my wife and I just bought our house less than a year ago. So I'll, pretty much every night before I go to sleep, I'm like, hmm, is tonight the night that a murderer is going to come in? Hmm. <laughs> it's going to happen one of these nights. Yeah, well, st- statistically speaking, you know. Kim also asks, what would your audition scary story be for the Midnight Society? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, I'd probably be like David and just steal something from somebody. It depends on how long I'd have to prepare, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess I'd have to wait and see which one of my family members dies that week. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'd just take like a Treehouse of Terror like episode and retell that. I mean, honestly... It would probably be about zombies. Yeah, you're right. Zombies would be a good one. We haven't had any zombie stories yet. No. Like, zombies were hot shit in, like, the the turn of this decade. Uh, mm-hmm. They've kind of cooled off now. But what were what was the zombie situation like in the early 90s? I think it, was, it wasn't quite as popular, but there were still a lot of gory zombie movies around that time. I mean, Day of the Dead came out in 85... The Night of the Living Dead remake was in 1990. Mm-hmm. I think there were a few t- Italian-style zombie movies, like The Beyond was around then. 
I could look at a list, but I don't want to. <laughs> we can leave it at there was some stuff. There was a good amount of late late eighties, early nineties zombie movies that I can remember. Uh, Return of the Living Dead was was just ramping up. I think the third one came out in like ninety one or ninety three, somewhere around there. Yeah, there was definitely zombie movies and a lot of inspiration these kids could have. I mean, they show Night of the Living Dead in uh, in Nightly Neighbors, and then they mention it again in Prom Queen. So they know zombies exist. Yeah. Well, well they don't actually exist, but zombie movies exist. So, yeah, I would probably just steal like an old classic tale because, I mean, it worked for David. He probably retold something bogus, and that's how he got into the Midnight Society. Yeah, just tell, like, frankenstein or something yeah exactly you know what i just thought of would be really funny what okay so gary's like the original member of the midnight society and they have to do an audition so he brings in let's say david first and he's like david we're gonna just sit in this room and you're gonna tell me a story and i'm gonna give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down (laughs) it's gonna be an anonymous vote (laughs) yep you gotta be blindfolded my closet (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so all right you ready for the last question yeah kim's last question and our final question from our fans today is do you think anyone is going to fail the audition to enter the midnight society oh god i oh. hope so <laughs> no i can't i can't say for sure but i hope so too <laughs> i hope it's eric i hope retroactively they're like <laughs> wait a second that story you told to get in was kind of shit eric <laughs> <laughs> now that i think about it there were plot holes yeah yeah you're out yeah right because there's never been a plot hole in any of these episodes <laughs> don't show up again next week <laughs> we're gonna move to a different log over by those wolves <laughs> right oh so we ended up getting a fan mail letter too um from michael and he says hey guys love your podcast i'm looking forward to your episode on the pinball wizard which is my favorite episode of season one well, I can't wait for you to listen to that, but I can't really talk too much because by the time this is out, Pinball Wizard would already be out, so you can listen to it and enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was a good episode. It was really good. I liked it a lot. I enjoyed it. So up next, we're going to be doing like a little award ceremony just for some categories that we, we thought were great throughout Season 1 and talk about what we liked and what we didn't like. So for Season 1, who do you think was your favorite supporting character for all of the episodes uh those would be like kathy from laughing in the dark aunt dotty bostic <laughs> just like the characters that weren't quite important they didn't they weren't pivotal to the story but they were still there yeah uh i don't think i can think of anyone better mm-hmm. than bostic bostic yeah, yeah. The true winner of the 600, boss. Yeah. He... Much better than his other counterpart, Benny. Yeah. All right. So what about, who do you think is the worst supporting character? Uh... Should we do worst? There's a lot of them. Pretty much everybody that's not Bostic is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a 50-way tie. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who's not uh... Bostic. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> <laughs> like i guess i would probably go with aunt dotty yeah she kind of sucked she was weird the touching the weird touching yeah she just was a little too eccentric anyway she didn't do anything for the story really and she was just weird i can't even get people to look at the place <laughs> i wish it would just <gasps> and also the touching all right so who do you think was your favorite main character of the season those would be Buzz and Denny from Phantom Cab, Josh and Ouija from Laughing in the Dark, Na- uh, Amanda from Lonely Ghost, etc. Um, I know this is a tougher one, isn't it? Yeah, so many of the the main characters of this are just kind of bland. Yeah, things just kind of happen to them, and the characters around them are the interesting ones. <laughs> <laughs> You know who I'm going to say? Who? I'm going to say Sean from Jake and the Leprechaun. Oh, yeah? I think he was my favorite hero. <clears throat> yeah, I guess he was. He was the real hero. He did He's all the, the hard work. He did all the work. Yeah. Yeah. I really do like Sean. I wouldn't miss it for all the suds in Dublin. 
I would say for me, the runner up would be, uh, gosh, it's really not that many great heroes. No, I guess Alex in Sorcerer's Apprentice was. That's what I was going to say too. Yeah, she was all right. Yeah, I didn't mind the three main characters from Prom Queen either. Greg, Jam, and Dee Dee. I thought they were all likable. Mm. They didn't fuck up the world, at least. <laughs> Greg's kind of lame. <laughs> he does get cock blocked at the end, which was great. Jam's totally lame. <laughs> <laughs> but they weren't terrible. Like, no, for example. He was just goofing. <laughs> yeah, they were all. All three of them were just having a big old goof. But I think number one for me would be Sean. And then. Yeah, I agree. Sean. Number two, Alex. Sean and Sean's hair. Yeah, Sean. And his cape. That cape was awesome. <sighs> Dope ass cape, man. <laughs> All right. So, what villain is your favorite? Each episode had, except for Prom Queen, had at least one villain, sometimes multiple. Some stories had a very clear villain, and some yeah. didn't, and some had none. Um,. <laughs> Yeah, it was difficult for me to find a villain for Hungry Hounds. Hungry Hounds I guess that went with is Giles. the one I was thinking of. Like, Giles wasn't even really a villain. He was just like, dude, you're supposed to feed these fucking dogs. Like, yeah. you know, dead the dogs should have been fed. So, you know, yeah, I guess uh, the one who didn't feed the dogs would be the villain in that scenario. Well, Dora's now a villain. In my the record books. In my head, there are two villains that really stand out the first is beth Beth, no! <laughs> okay sure beth is a cold motherfucker yeah. but she's she's just so watchable i agree that was episode three and she's still i would say one of the most enjoyable people to watch so yeah far. i mean love her or hate her she's she's just you can't take your eyes off of her she is she's beth. Beth. and the other one is goth oh gosh yes i love goth because of how totally incompetent he is <laughs> he lasted fucking five seconds and was thwarted by high school students he has been planning his resurrection to take over the universe for centuries and he is completely obliterated <laughs> by some high school students <laughs> in like Man, five minutes. Yeah, literally explodes. <laughs> he's resurrected and he's like, oh, now you're all in for some shit. It's goth up in the house. And then he's like, oh, fuck, is that science? You didn't tell me you had science here. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was the best. <laughs> God damn that guy. <laughs> I think it was probably one of my favorite moments that we've had so far in the yeah, in the show. That was with Goth's short but sweet <laughs> reign. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say also the boogeyman from Dark Music Hello. was a pretty great villain. Yeah, what was that thing? That's the only thing was, I can think is that it's the boogeyman. It was the like, eyes, the eyes in the darkness. Its true form. Because it appeared, it appeared as eyes. It appeared as the doll. It appeared as a weird mm-hmm. carny slash skeleton. Uh, yeah, I think that the red light and eyes and stuff are its true form, okay. which we never get to see. His true form is obviously the empty root cellar. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, yeah. The, the, I think all three of those. If we could do like a number one spot for all three, those are my. Those would be my top three as well. Beth, Goth, and Boogeyman. Actually, I'm just kidding. It's that fucking old lady with the T in Prom Queen. She's the scariest. What a goof. <laughs> She's like, oh, hello, kids. Just having a goof in here. <laughs> <laughs> so of these villains, let's do a quick kill count because this was there wasn't very many deaths. We're talking about on-screen deaths. And <laughs> there's a tie, a two-way tie, because only two people in this whole season have died on screen. And that is the lonely ghost killing Nanny by sucking her into a mirror world. Absolutely brutal. <laughs> Disgusting. And the boogeyman from the dark music eats Coda, the bully. And the sister. Come on. She died. She did, but that wasn't on screen. She died. She is fucking <laughs> dead. <sighs> we can't counter though. That She's little girl screen. was turned into a bike for Andy. <laughs> 
I think that's how it works. Yeah, he only gets bikes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there was a lot of there's a lot of lines in this show that I think have changed our lives forever. I would say. Yeah. Do you have any personal favorites? <laughs> oh, there's some standouts. Don't, Don't touch, touch my, my stuff. stuff. From Ooh, Beth. Classic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's do it. And All right. I, All right. <laughs> oh, I love that. From Captured Souls. And uh, obviously, Goths. <laughs> <laughs> Your beautiful Your human science has no effect <laughs> on me. What the? Oh, God damn. <laughs> Oh fuck! Oh yes. yes, yeah. What about you? I agree with all of those. I also love in Prom Queen. We're just having a goof. Like, <laughs> I don't know why. I just love it. Just goofing. Just goofing. <laughs> just having a goof. Like, can you show the fuck out? We're just having a fucking goof. Jeez. God. <laughs> Can't guys just have a goof? Can we just have a goof every once in a while? Gee whiz. It's, I um, have a new appreciation for that episode because um, I think that they went with just an overall 50s vibe, you know, with uh, Judy being like keen, you know, and, and just having a big goof, guys. No big deal. Just a big goof. I don't think anybody in these days would say that except people from the 50s. So those were my favorites. I also, I know... When Kiki and Twisted Claw was like, so they each used two wishes. <laughs> That's a good part. Oh, so. God. I love that. <laughs> uh, I think about that line all the time. <laughs> it's so funny. I love it. Um, But I think those are the main ones that I think we're going to take away and, you know, become inside jokes for our friendship. And yeah. I'm all right with that. All right. I love it. Ah. Ah. So we can't have a season wrap up for season one and not talk about the lamest names. Wow. I think this might be the most competitive category. (laughs) Yes. So we have, here's my rundown of the lamest names for this first season. Buzz and Denny, Ouija, Dougie. I don't know if he can hold a candle. He can't really hang in this conversation. But Bostic can. Weeds, Day Day, Jam, and I think that's it. Yeah. Any you'd like to add? No, I wouldn't add any. I think Denny is way too normal of a name to be on this list. I mean, he does his own restaurant. Yeah, Denny's is dope. Uh, Buzz, I mean, Buzz Aldrin, that gives the name some some coolness right there. You're right. And also Buzz from Home Alone. Yes, obviously. I mean, it's the coolest Buzz. Mm-hmm. I think it comes down to Ouija, Jam, Weeds, and Day Day. I agree. And you know what? Of those four, there was a character in a fighting game called Jam, but it was a girl. Mm-hmm. I can't think of any name Jam would be short for, though. Jamantha? <laughs> Jamson? No. Jam. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's all I got. I can't think of any other ones. Yeah. where Where the hell does the name Weeds come from? I don't know. I don't like Weeds' name. It just doesn't... No. It's not good. All right. So, uh, Ouija? That name is dumb as fuck. Nobody calls their kid Ouija. That's just a slap in the face. Like, huh, I hate this newborn child, and I I wanted to have a horrible life. I'm going to name it Ouija. Done. Day Day. It's a name that it has to be short for something, It has to be, but it isn't. His name is Day Day. It says it on his birth certificate, Day Day. <laughs> of the three names, I feel like Day Day would probably be the most likely to have other people named Day Day in the world. You really think there's other Day Days? I do. I think so. Wow. I was going to say that Day Day easily takes this category. <laughs> if we're going by, like, would I name my kid any of these names? I would probably name my kid Ouija over Day Day. <laughs> What do you go short for, for Ouija? Let's say you grow up and you realize that your name is Weege. the absolute worst. What do you, you go by Weege? I'd go by my middle name and hope it wasn't Day Day. <laughs> Ouija Day Day. <laughs> Ouija Day Day Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. 
<laughs> but I mean, day day, that's just the same thing twice. You go short, yeah. you're just calling yourself day. Yeah. I but mean, for Ouija, the only thing that you could do would be Weej, which sounds like weeds. Yeah. So that's like two shit names in one. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to let you decide which one you think is the worst of the three. I think we both agree that Weeds is not a good name, but also it's not as bad as Ouija or Day Day. Yeah. Day Day's like the worst fucking name I ever heard. <sighs> yes. He gets, I think Day Day's the worst too. All right. Congratulations, Day Day. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> All right. Who do you think was the most useless adult in this show? <sighs> I mean, were there any adults that weren't useless? Yeah, uh, Andy's mom from Dark Music. She wasn't useless. I mean, she she couldn't even put up those shades. (laughs) She did save him from getting devoured by the boogeyman, though. Kind of. Uh, She flipped the switch so that the doll didn't get him. And in The Nightly Neighbors, the mom from there fucking suplexed that mailman. Jake's parents couldn't even be bothered to show up for his one and only play. That he worked yes. hard for for a yeah, long time. Day. Yeah, that was his big break in stardom. It was his dream, and they were like, yeah. eh, I don't know. The news is on. I'm not leaving the house. <laughs> yeah, I think that is way worse than, say, Josh's parents from Laughing in the Dark, where they just went to go see a movie. Yeah. Like, they went to go see Jake in this play, but they <laughs> didn't invite Josh. No. They didn't leave Jake a bowl of pudding like, congratulations on your play. We're not going to be there, but enjoy this snack. They just weren't there. They didn't care. Uh, I think the mom from Hungry Hounds was pretty terrible, too, where she beeped her daughter off that horse and she <laughs> fell over. Yeah, she up to dupped her <laughs> hard. She up to, up to dupped the fuck out of her daughter. <laughs> I want to give it to Jake's parents, but... But they technically, like, didn't exist. So yeah, that's what I was that's thinking. A hard one. We can't give it to Sardo, even though he ruined everything. But then again, all three of those people ruined everything in that episode. Did Miss Crenshaw do anything important other than just kind of be mean? No. She wasn't really pivotal to the story. I mean, I guess technically she taught Dean that fucking, fucking chlorine destroys... Babylonian sorcerers every time. Did she, though, or did she just hand out a test and then run to her next class she had to teach? Good point. I mean, she might have made the test in the first... I don't know. Let's give it to Crenshaw. She. Did, <laughs> I thought she was a terrible person, a terrible actress, and she didn't add anything to the story. All right. It's Crenshaw. The winner. Boom. Worst adult. All right. I think that's about all the categories we have. I put scariest moment, but I think we could both agree that's the doll from Dark Music. Yes, that was the only scene of this first season that I, as a grown man, watched (laughs) and thought like, oh, fuck, what is that? God. Yes. Yeah, me too. There are some definitely some scary ideas, like uh, just the bad endings from basically Gary stories. Just some existential nightmare sort of things. Yeah, being stuck in a fucking glass, glass ball for all eternity and being stuck in a pinball machine for all eternity. Yeah, not pleasant. No, but those pale in comparison to the horrors of that fucking doll. Yeah, I'll be honest, like that night after we recorded, like I was laying in bed (laughs) and there was like a tiny little sound coming from the closet. And I was like, oh, fuck, is it that doll? (laughs) Well, maybe if you had a particle of light in your room. (laughs) And I was like, oh, man, who can I sacrifice to get a bike? (laughs) It's like, damn it, Cortland's not in Australia. I can't kill him. <laughs> uh. All right. Why don't we rank the Midnight Society members? We got Gary, Betty Ann, Kiki, Frank, David, Eric, and Kristen. We got seven members. Who do you think was the worst? Let's base this off of their personality and their stories because those are like the two main things right for the bottom i guess it would have to be frank yes i totally agree my instinct is to say eric because i really don't like a lot of things about eric but eric did tell two stories that weren't horrible frank only told one story and it was shit yes and he's an asshole all the time 
So yeah, he's kind of got no redeeming qualities. Yeah. Also in um, the Sorcerer's Apprentice, he said, "Oh, if I'm wrong about this not being a corpse, I'm going to give my rookie card away for Michael Jordan." And he was wrong, and he didn't give anybody his rookie card. So he's also a liar, that fucker, a cheat. Yes. Nope. I totally agree with you because Eric is probably the biggest asshole, but Kiki and Frank also have asshole qualities, and Frank's story was garbage. So yeah, I think Eric is just not the worst by default. You win this one, Eric. Who do you think it was be second worst then? Eric. All right, I'll give it to you. Because I think it would be it would be between Kiki and Eric. Yeah, it's definitely between those two. Because Kiki's a bitch and Eric is an asshole. But Kiki's story, she only had one story, and um, it was a good story. Yeah, I didn't hate she it. She just was. I think Kiki is more likable than Eric, and I, I think for that reason, it would go Frank is the worst, then Eric, then Kiki. And there's something. There's something a little more playful about Kiki's jerkishness. Mm-hmm, I agree. So it'll go Frank, then Eric, then Kiki. And then I think it'll probably go Kristen next. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because her story, Hungry Hounds just brought her down a lot. Because Prom Queen was pretty good. If Prom Queen was her only story, if she was one of those one and done people this season, yeah. I probably would have liked her more. I didn't yep. didn't hate her character totally. I mean, no. Nah. The way she shit on the people for playing video games in Pinball Wizard wasn't the coolest. No, nah, um, I agree. Her reliance on props is uh, kind of a weakness. Yeah. Well, we'll see what she does for the next couple of seasons. <laughs> Up next, I would say probably David. Who's left? Gary, Betty Ann, and David. Yeah. I liked David. In the beginning of the season. Well, pretty much just the one episode that he told. I liked David in Lonely Ghost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me and too. Then he, and then he just kind of disappeared from the show. Well, he did tell Twisted Claw. Yeah, too. he told Twisted Claw. but And he was in on the whole um, Black Morph suit prank at the end of Super Specs. Yeah, I just feel like um, he didn't make an impression yeah. other than that one episode that focused on his attraction to Kristen and giving her the present and all that Mm -hmm. Um, he's the most forgettable member yeah and that's just because he doesn't have a strong personality really he's just a sweet guy because i liked him yeah me too maybe in the next season or so he'll he'll ramp it up we'll we'll have to wait and see uh okay so we got betty ann and gary left yes i think the second favorite would be gary yeah i agree with you his stories were good he's the leader I like his personality. He seems like a kind of guy that I would want to hang out with. I mean, he started this spooky stories in the middle of the woods club. I'm like, I'd fucking join that club if I could. Yeah, I would too. And That'd then I'd struggle cool. to find a scary story to talk about. Yeah, I'd be the Eric I, group and I'd be, I'd be kicked right out. <laughs> but yeah, he seems like a very likable dude. His, his only... Good. Yeah, both of his stories I liked. The only flaw, I guess, would be... And this is something, I guess, is just mirroring Eric's complaints, but his stories aren't really scary. And not just in the sense that, you know, I'm a grown man watching a children's show kind of not scary, but like, it doesn't seem like they're even really trying to be scary so much. Yeah, I agree with you. They're they're genre stories. They're like cool little... They're fun. Sci-fi, fantasy, horror-ish kind of things. But yeah. yeah, the only thing that's that's scary about him happens at the very end. So it's like you got to sit through 20 minutes of him just telling a good story for a yeah, while. And he really likes like, people being trapped dies. in other dimensions forever. <laughs> um, another thing that kind of bothers me about Gary is that he, he was like, oh, we're going to set this rule that people can't be late. And then everybody just continues to be late. So you need a little more authority, Gary. Yeah. can be the best. Come on. You can't have mutinies every week, man. <laughs> and so that means that Betty Ann is our favorite storyteller of, of season one. Yeah. Betty Ann is, she's just, she's nice. She's nice. Mm-hmm. She tells good stories that yeah. aren't totally gross and always have happy endings. And she told the most stories this season. Mm-hmm. So she's always ready, always ready to tell a spooky story. And yeah. she defends why people for the most part when they're Except getting 
Well, yeah, fuck Eric. And <laughs> she's just the coolest. I couldn't agree more. I I think she's the best. All right. Well, now that we got the Midnight Society members ranked, do you want to rank the episodes? Let's do it. All right. I think we can both unanimously agree that the th- 13th and worst episode of season one is the tale of the hungry hounds. There's absolutely no discussion to be had. That is the yeah. worst episode. Even watching it for this show, I, there were things that I still enjoyed about it, but it's very clearly the worst. Uh, number 12, I would say would be the tale of the phantom cab. Yeah. Once again, I agree with you. The acting in it is just so horrible that it got Frank <laughs> the lowest spot in our in our midnight society ranking. yeah if frank had told an amazing story that would have propelled him up the list even though he is an asshole yeah he'd probably be below kirsten but above kiki yeah up next in number 11 spot hmm i would say i was thinking twisted claw yeah i agree let's do twisted claw there that's not to say it's there's like a big jump between phantom cab and twisted claw though yeah like a big jump in quality and enjoyment yeah twisted claw was something i could watch and be entertained by and not be like oh my god be serious yeah but yeah it's got some stiff competition here it does and you know it's the pilot episode so it's a little bit different than the rest there was things that i loved about it and it was just some things that it was like it, it doesn't help too that this is just a classic episode you know a classic tale that we've all heard before so it's just a new spin on something old number 10 uh i'd say super specs um you know i actually think i might like super specs just a little more than jake and the leprechaun Hmm, okay jake and the leprechaun really the only thing i liked about it is sean and i i really like sean but everything else about the episode is not the best uh super specs i just i was the whole episode like wondering okay what the hell is going on so it Mm kind of kept me interested the whole way okay just to figure out you know what what is happening okay i gotcha so what did you feel about prom queen then like prom queen's kind of a hard one to really rank because it it wasn't very good and it wasn't bad it's a classic story and it's just kind of a classic story done decently okay so which one do you think would be the number 10 spot for you i would put jake and the leprechaun at number 10 okay i can agree with you and for all the same reasons Sean was amazing, but if Sean wasn't in this episode, oh god! If it was just, it, if it was probably any other actor, really, it probably wouldn't be as good. All, All right. right, so number nine. Number nine, then. Prom queen. I would say I probably had more fun with Super Specs than Prom Queen. Thinking about it now, I'm trying to think. And what I said, what I just said about the, you know, the mystery and trying to figure out what happened in Prom Queen, I knew. Yeah. Like the yeah. plot twist you could see coming from a mile away. So there really mm-hmm. wasn't anything to figure out in that episode. So, you know, I enjoyed it, but yeah, I'd say number nine here. Number nine. All right. I agree with you. The number eight, I would probably put Super Specs at. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the Black Morph Suit dudes and Super Specs, they just weren't very scary. And while I did want to know what happens at the end, and it was very out there for a kid's show, uh, it was bad. It wasn't good. I mean, it was good. (laughs) (laughs) So number eight for Super Specs. Uh, Number seven. Hmm. So this is like average. Well, I don't want to say average, but it's like, I I would say this would be Captured Souls for me. That's what I had in mind as well. Yeah, it was a good episode. Lots of things that we can pull from it. Um, memorable. Peter is a creepy villain. Yeah. He killed creepy. He killed a lot of people and dogs. And dogs, yes. Sucked the life right out of them. Uh, number six, I would put... I think I'd put Nightly Neighbors at number six. Oh, yeah? I'd put Sorcerer's Apprentice, number six. Okay. I can agree with you. I think it's us talking about Sorcerer's Apprentice that left such a lasting impression on me and why I think I like it more than I thought I did. Yeah. Um, Nightly Neighbors and Sorcerer's Apprentice 
I both we I both got enjoyment out of talking to you about the episode more than the episode. Yep. Uh, Nightly neighbors just discussing how <laughs> ready to murder a family <laughs> Emma yeah. was. How and, bloodthirsty she was. And sorcerer's Any apprentice to fucking murder a family. <laughs> Goths pitifully short reign. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> so I could kind of toss up between either of those. Um, Let's put them both at like five and six then. Okay. For number four, I got to give it to Lonely Ghost. Yeah. I liked the episode a lot. I think even at the time I thought I I said it was better than Laughing in the Dark. But Laughing in the Dark is just so classic that I don't think Lonely Ghost could beat it. When people think of Are You Afraid of the Dark, they think of Zebo. Yeah. I mean, um, I believe so. I don't know. Yeah, that's... Whenever anybody brings up Are You Afraid of the Dark, everybody's always like, oh, man, the episode with the clown and the nose and the, and the cigar smoke. Well, maybe not that, but that's what they remember. They remember Zebo. He is basically the the mascot for Are You Afraid of the Dark. But Lonely Ghost Lonely was good. Ghost has Beth. That is it's, got its Beth. That is its trump card. That is its hidden yes. weapon. That's what it's got. That's why it's number four. It's... It was a solid story. I liked the ghost story within the ghost story. I liked the ending, and I loved Beth. And that's why I think it's number four. Yeah. So what we have left here is Tale of Laughing in the Dark, the Tale of the Dark Music, and the Tale of the Pinball Wizard, which are, I think, without question, the three best episodes of the season. Oh, yeah. For number three, I would put the Tale of Laughing in the Dark, I think. Yeah, me too. It was a good episode. I liked the episode a lot. Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of filler in this episode though. They didn't really utilize the whole time. You know, this episode if there was no Midnight Society interludes, there was no tickle scene, this episode would have only been like eighteen minutes long. It's just Josh going into the spook house, getting the nose, getting tortured by Zebo, and then putting it back. Yeah. I can see why it's a classic episode. It's a good episode though. It's, I love uh, it. You know, fear of clowns is a really common thing and the Zebo that they show for a few seconds is, you know, he's spooky looking. Uh, yeah, they did a good job. There's nothing bad I can say about the episode other than the tickle scene and there was like six Midnight Society interludes. Other than that, I thought it was great. Good acting, it's suspenseful, just fun. Yeah. So, between the Tale of the Dark Music and the Tale of the Pinball Wizard, which one do you think is... Let's do... Which one, which one do you think is number one? Number one, yeah, dark music. Totally agree. Yep, Pinball Wizard is is a lot of fun, but the dark music is just both a lot of fun and also the scariest episode of the season. Yeah, by far, really. There's nothing really scary about Pinball Wizard. Um, I did like the makeup on the witch. You know, she's got those claws and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. This episode was just everywhere though, and I didn't think it would work, but it does. Just, I mean, Sophie just fucking like teleports here and there and Ross is like, what? How the hell are you over here? But it's just constant action and it works. It is a really it's cool a concept for a story. And if you're a young kid watching that in the early 90s and you're into video games or pinball or anything like that, that would be the coolest shit to see on TV. Because mm-hmm. I'm sure every every kid had the idea like, what if I was in a video game? Yeah, and they do it. Well, I mean, I don't know if pinball is quite the medium that they should have used. They should have probably just used like a Nintendo game because it seems more believable. But the setting of a mall is awesome. And just like the zany fucking shit and the makeup and the monsters and stuff. It's all cool. I loved it. And then for the Tale of the Dark music, I don't think there's anything wrong with this episode. I mean, maybe the acting was a little eh, but... The story is just solid. There's no major plot holes. The monster is genuinely scary. Uh, the ending is just is just so good. Yeah, it's dark. It's a dark story. There's kind of a lot of backstory that makes you think, like, huh, what really happened there? How did that actually go down yeah. with Uncle Miles? And, uh, yeah, that ending is just fucking dark for a kid's show. Yeah, he straight murdered his fucking bully and thought about or is going to murder his sister <laughs> for, yeah. st- for the stuff. It's brutal. Yeah, and that's how uh, I think we would rank the first season. Overall, 
very enjoyable ride. I loved yes. every second of it. For the I'm most glad part, to be watching these for the first time. <laughs> except yeah, for Hungry Hounds. It's good. Yeah. So, Brandon and I were talking about what else we can give you guys. And there's only so much Are You Afraid of the Dark? There's only like 93 episodes. And at this moment, they are filming um, more. You know, they're bringing it back. Uh, the kid from It's going to be in it. Um, the kid that played Ben. I think his name is Jeremy Taylor. He's going to be in it. It's cool. But I want to give you guys something something more. Maybe some bonus episodes. I think that would be fun, don't you? Yeah. I think so, too. Did you know, Brandon, that there's more than just th- these episodes? There's more Are You Afraid of the Dark out there. We're going to be the first podcast to give you more. <laughs> there's books. Did you know there was books? I had one of the books, actually, when I was a kid. Even though I never watched the show, somehow I had a, just a single Are You Afraid of the Dark book in my pile of it? goosebumps and fucking Alex <laughs> Mack books. <laughs> Did you read it, though? Uh, I flipped through it. Okay. I didn't know there were Are You Afraid of the Dark books, and I've never read any of them, obviously. So we're going to have some bonus episodes where we're going to go through the fucking Are You Afraid of the Dark books. And by we, it's probably just going to be me, so don't get too excited. (laughs) (laughs) Boo! (laughs) So, yeah, I'm going to go through the Are You Afraid of the Dark book series. And it starts off with the tale of the sinister statues. So, yeah, I don't know when we're going to start getting them rolling. Probably in conjunction with season two. And we're going to see what happens with that. I'm pretty excited for it. You can't go wrong with more Are You Afraid of the Dark. We also... Are, have been doing a giveaway which started the week of the tale of the dark music and will be ending the day before this episode goes up so it just ended yesterday the winner of the are you afraid of the dark season one giveaway is alicia congratulations alicia i will get in touch with you later today on twitter thank you everybody for entering ah, all right brandon we're starting up season two next week are you excited oh so excited the first episode of season two is titled The Tale of the Final Wish. Who do you think is going to tell that story? We'll assume that all these, all the kids are going to be back. Who do you think is going to tell the story? Okay. Um, this sounds like a David. Oh, okay. All right. What do you think The Tale of the Final Wish is going to be about? This is some genie shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd agree. A big old pile of genie shit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to make a guess as to what the final wish will be? Hmm. The final wish will be to undo all of the mess they made with the first two wishes. That's a good final wish. It's like, oh, I fucked up. Let's just say never mind for everything. Let's just forget this episode ever happened. <laughs> I think you're going to be right. We'll, we'll see, though, because I don't remember this episode that well. So... I can't wait. I'm so excited to dive into season two. All right. But for now, Brandon, I don't know. Is there anything else we got to talk about? No. Okay, good. I hope not. Because I've been up all night, man. I am getting sleepy. We just watched fucking six and a half hours of this show. Whew, I'm ready for bed. I've been up all night, man. All right. Good night. Night. I'll talk to you next week. Yeah, I'll see you. Season two, baby. All right. Let's do it. (laughs) Let's do it. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Right. Then let's do it. All right.